In this next section, I'm going to be taking you through the sound block. So what we want to do, as usual, is start a new program. And as you can see, my EV3 brick called Hawk is ready. And we're going to drag a sound block onto the programming canvas. Um, and I'm going to play that sound. It's called Mindstorm, so it should be, it's the default sound whenever we drag a sound block in. So let's play it. I'm going to drag it in. Notice it takes a, a little bit longer to download. That's because it's a sound file. And here we've got the word Mindstorms being played. Now, I can actually quite easily change it from Mindstorms. I can click on the actual word. It brings up all the folders with all the different sounds in. And I can choose another sound. Let's do Boo as an example. Press Play and Download. A little bit longer. Just bear that in mind. It's just the sound file. And it's played the sound Boo. Now, there are two parameters that you can see on the uh, sound block. The first is the volume. Very straightforward, how high or how loud or how soft do I want the sound to be. The second parameter takes a little bit more explaining. This is called the play type. And there are three options. I'll explain them, then I'll do a demo. So the first one is wait for completion. OK, now wait for completion will play the sound once, and the program will wait for the sound to finish before it continues. The next one is play once, the sound gets played, but the program continues immediately. And then we have the repeat. The sound will be repeated continuously until another sound block is executed or until the program finishes. So let me just show you an example. Let me show you a couple of examples here. I've got my EV3 brick ready. Um, I'll go back to the default. So let me just take that away and bring in the default sound called Mindstorms. We're going to play that sound, then we're going to move. So I'm just going to move one rotation. So watch what happens. Now this is where it is, wait for completion. So here we go. Press play. It's downloading. What should happen? It should wait and then move. Here we go. Mindstorms. Plays the sound and then moves. OK, now look at the difference. If I now say, not wait for completion, but play once, now watch what happens. It plays the sound as well as moving at the same time. OK? Now, I want you to try one. I want you to try repeat and change it to three rotations. And what should happen? It should say Mindstorm several times. Ready-made sounds are not the only things you can do on this sound block. I'm going to take you through some of the other features now. So let's have a look at um, the other features. So we click on the change mode. And you can see we can do other things, not just play a file. We can play tones, we can play notes, and we can record our own sounds. I'm going to show you how to play a tone and how this works. Um, this is all about hertz. And we have a hertz range between 300 and 10,000. So if I choose a hertz range of, let's say, 3,000, hit the play button, we should get a tone come up. That's quite a high tone, that was. Uh, and uh, you can do little experiments to see how many hertz you can play until actually you can't hear it anymore. That's quite a fun one to do. So what else can we do? Well, if I click back onto the change mode, let's play a note. And here, I can play a piano keyboard. So I can choose different notes. So here, I'll, ch I'll choose middle C, hit the play button, and it's played a middle C for me. So I'm going to go back to the main menu for a moment. And this is going to be a nice little feature I wanted to show you. You can rename your files. Really important so you don't end up having program one, program two, program three, et cetera, et cetera. Or else it's very hard to find what you've done. So how do I change the name of a file? Very simple. You click on the name, and I can type a new one. And when I press done, you'll see the word sound has been replaced. Now, for the um, play note, I uh, created one earlier. And I want you to guess which national anthem this is. I wonder. But here we go. 
hit the play button. Okay, I'm not that musical, but I think I did a pretty good attempt. What I would like you to have a go at doing is creating your own national anthem using uh, these programming blocks, using the sound blocks. So I'm going to come out and go back and create a new program and bring in the sound block once more. And I want to show you the final feature, which is record your own sound. Okay, I can record eight seconds worth of sound using the tablet microphone. And let me demonstrate how this works. So I click on record sound and you can actually see the microphone pulsating saying click me. And if I click, it actually prompts you to give it a name. So I'm just going to say uh, welcome. And when I start recording, I have eight seconds. So I'm just going to say welcome, welcome to your e-learning. Welcome, welcome to your e-learning. Press stop. I can preview it. And I can then play it. So if I hit play, now, sound files do take up longer, do take up bigger file sizes, so the download time will be much greater if you've got eight seconds of sound that's been recorded. So always bear that one in mind. That's just the nature of a sound file. Same with images as well, okay? But here we go, you should be able to hear my voice. Welcome, welcome to your e-learning. Okay, so you heard it there. Often, it's quite good to get nearer to the microphone if you want that to be reflected through the EV3 brick as well. So that's a sound block, lots of really cool features, okay? Um, have a play, have an explore, try all of them and see what you can create.